Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here, and to say this year's stock market has been a little frustrating is like saying the 86 bears were just a little good. You can't stop the fridge, son. We've been stuck in that cycle of bear market rallies all year. The ultimate market head fake where stocks start to recover only to fall back down into that longer term bear market. In this video, I'll explain the bear market rally, show you what it is and how long they usually last. We'll look at average time the market stays in that bull and bear markets and what causes stocks to fall. I'll then give you a complete plan for how to invest in a bear market, avoid these kinds of bear market traps, and what to do. We're getting started, but before we do, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I want to start with the basics of a bull and bear market in stocks, what causes bear markets, and how long they last. Then we're going to look at that bear market rally and how to invest without losing your money. The technical definitions of a bull and bear market aren't very helpful. A bull market is just when stock prices are increasing over more than a few months, while a bear market is any drop in stocks or the market of more than 20% from the peak. Clearer though is the levels of investor sentiment and thinking that we see in bull and bear markets. During the bull market, investors transition from hopeful to optimistic and overjoyed as stocks keep heading higher. Everyone is going to be rich and the market will never fall. In a bear market though, that remaining hope quickly fades and denial sets in, then bargaining and panic. It's actually a lot like the seven stages of grief, ending in capitulation and despair when investors finally give up. Looking at this research from McKinsey Investments, we see there were 12 bull markets over the 60 years to 2020. On average, stocks jumped 129% from the low point to the bull market top and lasted about 54 months. There's also been 12 bear markets of a 20% drop or more, with stocks falling an average 28% when the bull stops charging, and it's taken an average of 9 months from that peak in prices to the bottom of the market. Now it's true that history never repeats itself, and no two bear markets are alike, but when Twain said history does tend to rhyme, he could have been talking about stocks because there are common causes to bear markets and recession. If we look back on the eight major market crashes since 1956, we do see some common causes here. Higher interest rates is the most common, often after a run of high inflation. A few times here, some kind of geopolitical event has caused a commodity price shock that helped feed into that inflation. And lately, we've also seen crashes followed by three to five years of just runaway stock prices as well. So then what happens in a bear market rally and why is this the ultimate head fake for investors? And first though, I want to get your opinion on this. How long do you think the current bear market will last? Scroll down and let me know in the comments how long will stocks keep falling and what level on the S&P 500 will we reach at a bottom? A bear market rally or a bear trap is a short term rebound in stocks, usually 5 to 10% higher before the market starts falling again to reach lower lows. And looking back on the NASDAQ, you can see we've already had three of these this year, with the market up as much as 16% in March before falling back and then hitting that May low. We also started a rally in late May that looks like it's already unraveling. So with the average length of the whole bear market around 9 months, these bear traps usually only last an average of 2 or 3 weeks to, to as long as a couple of months. And that's what's so frustrating about these though is some can last long enough to, to make you think that we're back in that bull market with stocks heading higher only to fall back and lose more money. These bear market rallies are often caused by short term oversold conditions and anxious investors still just trying to buy the dip but before any real change in those fundamental market forces that are pushing stocks lower. For example, we see here a chart of the S&P 500 with its relative strength index or RSI graph below. That's a technical indicator that measures momentum in prices to indicate if stocks might be overbought or oversold on a short term trading. And we do see that before each of these bear market rallies this year, that RSI approached and even broke below the 30 level that indicates oversold conditions. Basically, stocks fall so fast and investors get so negative that, that the market is like a coiled spring ready to bounce back higher. Prices head higher for a day or two on that relief rally, investor sentiment improves as more investors try to buy in on that rebound and you get that bounce of 5 or 10%. But again, the problem is nothing has really changed in the market or the economy. That bigger picture that was forcing stocks and investor sentiment lower is still firmly in control. In this case, interest rates that are likely to rise for another year and slowing the economy and, and just decades high inflation that is starting to weigh on consumer spending. So what we end up seeing is once the market lets off that little bit of that tension, 
stocks are no longer oversold and some economic data is released to, to just remind investors of those downward forces. The bear market takes over again and stocks hit new lows. And of course, the dangerous part in all of this is that these rallies pull investors back into stocks, fearing that they're gonna miss out on that next bull market. They push all their cash into the market. And then when stocks head lower again, Investors are just stuck with nothing to do but watch their portfolio shrink. I'll show you how to avoid all this and how to invest in a bear market next, but I also want to personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for that sign up link below. Now I want to show you how to invest in a bear market, but understand so much of investing depends on your personal goals and your portfolio and how to analyze that portfolio. So I'm going to link to another video in the description below to take you step by step into how to find the gaps in your own portfolio and how to make your own custom investing plan. Now we've already seen that a new bull market just cannot start until those bigger picture fundamentals and the economy starts to change. For example, we likely won't see a bottom in stocks until some kind of a signal that the Fed is ready to stop raising rates. And and that's not going to happen until we see inflation come down below 5% and just keep falling. Until that point, any rally in stocks is probably going to be that classic bear market trap. So how should you invest? First, if the stock crash is causing you to lose sleep, really stressing you out, and you haven't built a cash cushion to invest later, bear market rallies can be great opportunities to de-risk a little and build cash. Now hold up, that doesn't mean you rush out to sell all your stocks as soon as the market goes up 5%. Instead, look through your portfolio, look through your stocks, and pick out any that aren't those high-confidence, long-term investments. And these are going to be your highest levels of stress in the market crash anyway, because you're, not, you're on the fence about owning them in the first place. And what you can do is the next time the market rallies 5%, then consider selling a third of your position in those stocks. If the market continues to rally up another 10% higher, then maybe sell another third of that original position. You can also sell in the money call options against some of your positions if you don't want to sell the stock, but the idea here is you just take some risk off the table and convert into cash. Now this strategy is going to allow you to keep some money in those stocks as well as the rest of your portfolio, so, so you do benefit if stocks keep rising, but, but you've also lowered your risk and now have some cash that you can invest later if the bear rally falls apart. Another strategy you can use here is called the barbell approach. If you think about a barbell, you have all the weight on each end with nothing in the middle. Now with a portfolio, this means you would have your investments split with about half in high risk stocks and the other half in extremely safe assets like, like cash, the Series I savings bonds, and short term bonds like, like maybe the Vanguard BSV fund. And what this does, it's going to give you the opportunity to benefit when the market recovers because it's going to send all those oversold tech and growth stocks booming higher. When the S&P 500 rallied 10% in that March rebound, Shares of Tesla surged 49% in just two weeks. Having the other half of your money in those extremely safe investments though gives you the opportunity to protect that part of your portfolio and then buy into stocks at lower prices if the bear market continues. Click on the video to the right to see how to analyze your portfolio to know exactly what to do and how you can get your portfolio reviewed right here on the channel. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.